two to three hundred, it's just an extension on top of it. Create page detail. Yo, all right, we are on our way down to Soho to go check out a new co-working cafe, somewhere that allows laptops, because today we're continuing work on the payments integration for the full stack application to go alongside my Discord. And speaking of the Discord, I'm not gonna lie, I've been getting a little bit concerned. I said that I was gonna launch this thing at 30K subs, but every day we're growing by like two to 300 subs. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little bit concerned because it's making the build super, super like, I've gotta get it done. Who knows, I might have to like delay it a little bit, but we will find out. I'm, I'm trying to stick on schedule. Otherwise, priority right now is to go get to a laptop cafe. Let's get started. little view front and center so what I've been working on over the past few days especially has been this like payments integration with my discord because when I want to launch this discord I want to have this app that goes alongside it that offers this like extra functionality to all you guys and so for me the biggest part has just been kind of like automating all the little things like automatic role assignment and invitations and ensuring that if people buy this and they get that and if they get this they get that there's so many different moving parts so it's been like quite a crazy process and in the meantime I've been battling trying to like not look at the subscriber count the closer this gets to 30 Okay, the more work that I have to do because I need to get this launch. Um, so there is a potential chance that I have to delay this Discord launch slightly, but that's okay. This morning, what we're gonna be doing is jumping straight into the code base and I'm gonna be fixing up this little integration here where I've got an automatic Discord invitation that goes out after they complete an action. So we're gonna be connecting that up. It's also going to then understand as soon as the user is actually added to the guild, so the Discord server, they're gonna be assigned certain roles, which is really cool. And also another thing to note that I forgot to mention in one of my last videos as well is anyone that joins the discord as well i'm going to be on the lookout for really really good high quality mods so if you want to be a mod it's in your best interest to stand out in the discord provide like other value to other developers so yeah the goal is to make it just like the sickest developer discord on earth so i know a few of you have been commenting down below asking how do i actually set up nest and how does it actually work so essentially the way that it works it's kind of like broken down into multiple different modules you've got my front end application and you've got my back end application and the way that a back end application works is essentially the front end is just making queries and then it's returning data, kind of as simple as that. Now as far as Nest, it's just an extension on top of Express that just like gives it a whole lot of superpowers. And the main way to think about it is that it's broken down once again into little buckets. And I might have things such as my users, my pages, my repositories, for example, for the like GitHub tool that I was building a few weeks back. And these are different things that someone can call and receive different data from. And essentially these little boxes are just broken down into three little pieces. One being a controller, which is you where you get all your like get endpoints and post endpoints. Then you've also got a service, which actually does all the business logic. So the controller then talks to the service. And then you've got a main module that kind of like holds both of those together. So there's three things within one box. And each of these things, so the users, the pages, the repositories, they have all three of these things, a controller, a service, and a module. Now, what I normally do is I'll break it down into different folders. So if we break it down on this example right here, you can see I have my source folder, which has auth, library, public, and utility. And I just break down my endpoints based on kind of what the main topic is. And for this example, you can see I've got a public folder which has my page, subscriptions, and users endpoints. And inside each of these, you can see inside the page, we've got a controller, a service, and a module. Here's an example of what the page controller might look like. You'll have multiple different endpoints that do different things. So you can see get all pages or get page by ID, get page to edit. And each of these endpoints are just talking to the page service. So we jump into the page service. And as you can see, we've got our get page to edit service function that has been called by one of the endpoints up there and that's going to take in a user ID, a page slug and it's going to do a whole lot of business logic talking with my database and a few other cool things. But what's really cool is inside my public folder I've got these main endpoints but they can also talk to my utility endpoints. So for example with Discord and with Stripe. Another thing as well that you guys have been asking, I've seen it in the comments, what the heck is a DTO folder? 
Well, inside your controller and service, you're going to want very, very nicely typed data. And so DTOs are essentially just a really fancy way of defining an interface for what data structures look like. So for example, we'll have create page DTO. And all this is doing is essentially it's saying for the body object that comes in on the create page endpoint, we're going to define a slug, which is a string, and a user ID, which is a string. And what this means is that when I'm generating types to my front end application, it knows very type safely that it requires a slug and a user ID, which are both strict. So there's no way to get the types wrong. That's essentially what a DTO is doing. And you can use DTOs for the return object, for the body object. So yeah, as you can see, that's kind of like the 10 second breakdown of Nest and how you can build beautiful, scalable CRUD endpoints for your backend and connect it to your database and then generate beautiful types to your front end. That's what I use all day, every day. And I think it's one of the coolest setups ever. Hope that answers some of your questions. And I know that it was only a very brief version, but I gotta get some work done. So let's get to it. Something that I do want to talk about a little bit is focus once again. Obviously, if you've been watching me over the past month or so, you would have seen that there's been a couple of projects that I've been working on. One of them being Repo Bear, which was a repository sharing tool for developers. So if you had a private GitHub repository and you wanted to like share a link to an unknown amount of people or like you were sharing it with a recruiter or someone that you're applying for a job to and you want to be able to share code without allowing them to like clone the repository. That was a project I was working on. What was really cool is we've got like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of waitlisters got people who like pre-ordered it, paid for their first year up front. Really, really cool to have that money sitting in Stripe. So yeah, as a developer, really cool for me to see because then it's like, great, that's validation that people actually want this. They've actually paid money. Really awesome. What I have realized in the meantime is that there is a different application, which is the one I'm building right now, which actually in the end would make so much more sense based on my current position living in New York. But what I've recently realized is working all day, every day on something, you realize how much complexity is involved that you still haven't even touched just yet. That's when I realized that the current application of Repo Bear was actually going to be far more complex than I originally realized. Now that doesn't say that I can't do it. Absolutely I can do it. It's just opportunity cost based on other things that I'm really, really excited about doing and that I want to get done. For example, I really, really, really want to launch this developer Discord. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. Just been waiting for like kind of like the right moment to do it. The way that I want to do it, there's a very certain kind of particular way that I want to like manage users and manage access and do all that kind of stuff. And that's what the application that I'm building right now. It's to kind of do all that so that I can ensure that I can launch this Discord community and it's going to be really cool for you guys especially. But what I realized in building that was that there's actually an opportunity here for me to allow you guys to also take part in this application that I'm building and the utility service that it really is. And so that's when I was like, hang on a second, I could actually launch this as an individual product, but that means I've got to like cut down somewhere else where it's taking all my energy, all my mental energy, my physical energy, all my time developing. And that's what's happened with RepoBear. So what I actually did as of last night is I made a really hard decision over the past few weeks I've been really thinking about it and I've actually gone ahead and refunded every single person that pre-ordered Repobear. Now that's not to say that I don't ever build it but it's just to say for now out of respect for those people that really supported the project and were like yeah we're gonna like show that we want this and we're gonna pay for it. I just wanted to out of respect refund those people so if you're one of them thank you so much for your support but I have refunded you. If I ever do build it I will just honor those people that paid for it and still give you your first year for free anyway. I think it's the right thing to do. Refund because I'm not prioritizing it right now and instead I'm prioritizing this project. So my plan is over the next week, we're going to hit probably 30k subs and I'm meant to be launching this Discord, but I think I might have to delay slightly if I still haven't quite finished the integration with Discord and Stripe and all the different things that I'm trying to do for this Discord launch. That's the plan. I also want to reveal to you guys the product of what I've been working on and how you can use it and how it's going to just like, the only thing that I can really say right now is that it's just going to be the easiest and coolest way for you, no matter what niche you're in, to create a paid community, but like next level, making things so simple, so fast, so easy, beautiful, clean, modular way for you as a creator or just like a person of influence to create a very deeply connected community in like a second. As you can imagine, there's a lot of complexity that goes into that in like a technical aspect. So that's what I've been focusing a lot of my time on. I'm gonna head home now. I'm gonna meet up with Maddie and Hermie. I think we're gonna go to Central Park today because the weather is getting warm, but then we're gonna continue the build 
build later on as well because there is still a lot to do because I think we're like almost at 30k subs yeah we're at 29.5 thousand subs and like last night I went to bed and it was like 29.2 so yeah going absolutely insane thank you guys so much for supporting the channel if you're new around here I'm Jacob I'm a developer in New York City and we build projects that's the vibe that's what we do hope you enjoy it subscribe let's go go to Central Park. Super warm outside today, so we're heading to Central Park. Also Hermes first time at Central Park ever. We're back from the park. Hermy is exhausted. Maddie's editing the video that you're currently watching right now. And I'm about to explain to you how, in broad terms, my application actually works. User comes in to your page. There's an offer for them to sign up to your Discord or whatever this thing is. And they're gonna click a button, which is gonna take them to a payment portal right here which is going to integrate with Stripe. And then once they successfully go through, Stripe's then gonna send a webhook to my backend. My backend is gonna go, hmm, okay, what can this user have? And they might send the user a link to a Discord or they might send the link, or if the user's already in the Discord, they might give them some roles or whatever they're gonna do. Following that, if a user stops paying for the subscription, then what's gonna happen is it's gonna send another webhook to my backend, which is gonna tell Discord to remove these roles and also remove them from the Discord. Maybe, I'm not sure about that part just yet, but but they're definitely going to remove the roles. Final part is that you as the person with the page can actually see all the information of all the users that have subscribed in a nice beautiful dashboard. So you'll be able to see all that right there and also manage user access, assign custom roles, all that kind of thing. Most importantly, everything is handled for you in one easy place and this is where I got the idea from. For me, starting my server, I'm like cool, I want to be able to have like the sickest developer community coming in. I want to be able to offer really good value, obviously for a small price, but I want to also be be able to automatically manage user roles. I want to auto invite people to the Discord. I want to be able to offer different services as well, like Telegram or Slack or all sorts of different other resources that I haven't really been able to find a perfect solution for elsewhere. Hence why I've been doing this crazy build over the last few weeks. After a little bit of thinking and realizing that I've been pushing myself crazy hard, this is my stats over the past seven days right here. I think it's going to take a little bit more time just to get this thing perfectly ready for not only my page to go live, but 
also if you want to start a page as well, how you can let yours go live. And I really want to just like make sure everything's perfect, not perfect, but like decent enough that it's ready to go and nothing's going to break. Maybe I'll be extending until I'm at like 31, 32, maybe 35,000 subs. But most importantly, I only really want to delay by a couple of weeks, but we'll see. I'm working really hard to get this out to you guys. I've still got more work to do. It's also really important to me that when I launch this Discord, it's really good quality for you guys, especially when it first launches. I want to be really active in there, talking with you guys. Any questions when it comes to like development and working in like engineering style jobs and projects you're working on. My priority is that you guys feel like listened to, you're given answers and you know, there's people that come around each other and kind of just like build this community of devs who are just really, they're just interested in building. And that's kind of the dream people. So I would say when this does drop and the Discord is available for you guys to jump into, if you're not really interested in development or building, you don't necessarily have to be a coder, but if you're not interested in building stuff, this might not be the right place for you because I'm really gonna be pushing like bettering yourself, building really cool stuff, improving your skills, helping others, getting excited about cool tech and like, you know, who knows, startups could be built from within this community. That would be actually a sick output. If you are interested in building and you love just like getting deep into all this stuff, and even if you're just like in product or you're in design or whatever you're in, this is just a place for builders. Exciting times for sure, still a ton of work to do. I need to finish this entire flow. I need to get those payment endpoints finished. <laughs> I need to get, oh, and that's the other thing as well. Maddie's been going nuts designing the front end UI for how the initial sign up flow for this app is gonna work. So you guys will come in, you'll sign up, you'll be able to go through this like beautiful wizard essentially to create your own page for creating an amazing membership community. So we've just been figuring out that UX flow. Then we've got to do the entire like UI and make sure it's like just, you know, it's a lot to do, we're getting there. 30K subs would be amazing if I can launch it. I don't know, at the rate you guys are subscribing, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. I'm gonna keep working this afternoon. Maddie's gonna keep editing this video that you're watching right now, and we're gonna keep moving. Let's see, let's see how close we can get to 30K subs anyway.